I'm Autumn and I am here at our giant Pacific octopus habitat. Now the first thing you might notice when you look into this great area is that you can't see the octopus. Well the octopus is actually over here in this corner. She is hiding. They are a master of camouflage. They actually have skin on their body that is made up of something called chromatophores. Now these contain color or pigments that change color whenever she wants. Not only can their skin change color, but it can actually change texture and they can blend in to almost any type of surface. So right now she's starting to move a little bit, just a little bit. Now, an octopus is in a group called cephalopods, and that literally means head, foot. But really, they don't have any feet. So when we talk about an octopus, we can think of numbers. Eight, three, and nine. So eight has to do with the number of arms that they have. An octopus has eight arms, and each arm is covered with suction cups. Now these suction cups can hold on to things, but believe it or not, they can actually taste with those suction cups and know what it is that they've grabbed a hold of. And remember the three? The three is how many hearts they have. They actually have three hearts. Two of the hearts are used to pump blood across their gills. Now that's just like a fish. That's how they're gonna get that oxygen into their body. And then one heart is used to pump the oxygenated or all that nice rich blood out to their body so their body can use it. So nine is the number of brains that they have. They have one brain in their body, up in their head, and then the other brains are in each of their arms. Could you imagine if we had a brain in each of our arms? We could do math problems with one arm, and then with the other arm, we could write our English paper. We could get so much done. So an octopod or an octopus is actually a very smart creature. And we don't know exactly how smart they are yet. We can compare it to us, but we are so unlike an octopus that it's hard to compare it exactly. We do know that an octopus can use tools. They've actually found an octopus collecting coconut shells, carrying them over long distances, and then using them to hide in if a predator comes along. We know that they can solve puzzles, they can get through a maze. They found that an octopus has actually been able to get into crab traps, steal the crabs from the fishermen, and escape those traps. We also know that they can recognize individuals. They've done an experiment where they had two different people wearing the same clothes. One gave the octopus treats, one gave them something that wasn't so great, and the octopus was actually able to identify the person that gave them treats and treated them differently. There's a story of an aquarium where there was a keeper that the octopus didn't like so well, and every time that keeper came by, the octopus would shoot water at her. So we know that they can identify individuals and they are super smart. Well, an octopus is so smart that we can actually give them toys and they will play with them just the way that about a three to five year old child would play with them. Now our octopus is so smart that our keepers have actually been able to do training with them. Let's go check that out. Hi, I'm Tyler Brown and I'm an aquarist here at the Akron Zoo. This is our octopus. Uh, octopuses have eight arms and they have nine brains. That is one brain for each arm and one central brain that helps control and coordinate function between all of those other brains. Octopuses are masters of camouflage. They can change not only the color of their skin, but also the shape and texture of their skin to meet their uh, environmental needs. So in the wild, octopuses would capture their prey by sneaking up on them, and they're gonna be looking to capture uh, crustaceans, so crabs, as well as some mussels and mollusks and other snails. Uh, here at the Akron Zoo, we try and do our best to replicate that. 
uh, and we feed her a lot of crab, a lot of shrimp, a lot of mussel. We do occasionally feed some fish, so some herring or some capelin, and her favorite is salmon. So octopuses are very intelligent creatures, and as such, they need a lot of enrichment and uh, intelligent stimulation in their environment. So not only does she have some friends in these anemones and sea stars, but we also provide her with some uh, toys and other means by which she can play and interact with her environment. This might include putting some of her food into a puzzle container, so she has to work to try and figure out how to remove the food so she can eat it. But that also might be something as simple as a cave, so that she can go and hide into another uh, spot where some texture, so she can uh, try and use her suckers to grab onto something different than just her rock wall environment. Now, enrichment can also include training. For, her, uh, for this octopus here, we train her with two basic techniques. We have a target and a station. And the difference between these is a very simple. A target is she just comes over and she touches the uh, end of the target pole with one of her tentacles. And she is uh, given a treat as a reward. The station, she comes over and sits completely on top of the station, and then she was uh, rewarded. Training can help us in all sorts of aspects of animal care, and one of the best is to actually monitor their health. The octopuses aren't going to be able to speak to us and tell us how they're doing or how they're feeling, so one of the best ways of telling if they're still doing uh, really well and they're thriving in their environment is to see if they're still growing. Uh, and the best way to do that is to measure their weight. And that is pretty difficult with something that lives in the water. So training helps us to get her to come voluntarily out of the water so we can put her into a uh, basket or some other means by which we can then subsequently weigh her. So I hope you had some fun learning about our octopods here at the zoo. Now we're going to go see Sarah and she's going to do some more crafts with us. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Sarah and I'm going to show you a couple different activities and a craft. So we just learned all about the octopus and I thought we'd make just a sweet, cute little octopus craft here that is just kind of fun, very simple. Okay, so the first step, again, just a plain paper plate. I did crayons, you can do paint, whatever your little artist feels like doing that day. Color the plate in. And then we're gonna cut along a little wavy line. Once you cut off that portion, take your hole punch. And I punched all the holes along that border. And then I found some yarn that I had, different colors. So you cut a length of yarn. I just doubled it up. Okay, so you have that little loop. Push the loop right through one of these holes. Then you just take the long piece, whoop, tuck it through your loop, pull tight. Now you have the little knot. There you go. So fill in all your holes with different yarn, whatever colors you have, whatever colors you want. I gave my octopus two fun eyes and a little half smile. And there you go. Something simple. Okay, so a fun game that, again, it looks so preschool, but I'm telling you, you let kids measure and play with dried beans, popcorn, rice, and again, it's ageless. You will find your older ones in there. They love to scoop it up. You can hide things in here, make them find the letters to their name, put the letters in order. So many games you can play with a plastic container of beans or popcorn or rice. So what I did was I, with this I found, I, I made three little animal faces. You don't have to make this fancy. You don't want animal faces. Then in your little container, whatever animal you have, drop them in the bottom and put a penguin, put a penguin in there and put a little bear in here. So you don't have to make the faces. Just thought the faces were fun. Two ways you can play this game. You can roll a dice, a die. So we came up with four, and you can rotate. They can pick what animal they want to feed. So four, so then you would tell your child to measure out four. We're gonna feed the lion four scoops. So this is how we're taking care. A lot of counting, some sorting. You can do it with a die. My other idea was to pull out your Uno cards, have them pick a card. So fun, you can talk about colors, you can talk about numbers. Um, again, lots to learn here for kids and very simple. You can make it harder for older kids, you can make it more simple. So, just an idea to keep them busy.
Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our octopus lunch and learn and then some little fun animal or octopus craft. Next time you're in the cafe and at the zoo, make sure you stop by our tank and visit our white spotted um, bamboo sharks. They like to stay low, so make sure you give them some love and take a visit. We'll see you soon. Thank you.